Show me where you're just showing me. Normal pinchers? Not normal pinchers. Oh, man. So, since my last video, I've gotten a lot of comments about my arm and what actually happened to me. And we'll get to that. But a year and a half ago, when I was massively struggling, I started doing a daily walk. It was scheduled in my calendar. I had a half an hour where my one and only goal was to walk around, spend time with the animals that I love so much, and wander the farm, making lists of everything I could think of that I was grateful for. Then I review that list before I go to bed, and then again first thing when I wake up in the morning, and that daily practice of being grateful instead of thinking about the things that weren't going well or weren't going right or weren't going the way that I wanted them to go has changed my life. Which leads us to right now. A few weeks ago, I was making nachos at midnight in my office using a carving knife. And though I teach knife safety, I forgot everything I've ever been teaching and stabbed myself right in the hand. I went, it went three inches deep. There was so much blood. It was awful and excruciating. And the voice that has lived inside my head my entire life, the voice that has fueled so much of my depression and anxiety and, and crappy ways of thinking, got really loud in that moment and said, like, this is your fault and this is what you deserve. Like, you know better and you made a bad choice anyway and now here you are. We're lucky to live in Nashville, in a place that has amazing health care. I was able to be seen by a doctor right away. In fact, the doctor that stitched me up was himself a woodworker and a user of his hands for a living. And so he stayed for three hours after his shift to stitch me up because he knew how important returning function to my hands really was. So I got to the point where I thought everything was okay. I just had to get through like a two week period of time and then things would be back to normal. But the day after I released the video about the cows and our new milking routine and all that stuff, I went to get my stitches out and found out that things were much worse than I actually thought. I was told that I needed to go for a surgery consult because I'd lost mobility and feeling in my pointer or my index and my thumb. That was a pretty, pretty rough blow. I mean, I use my hands for a living. I've been a musician my entire life. Like literally the week before this happened, I was learning a new song on the piano so that Adam and I could play it at our next concert. And like the thought now of like that stuff not returning at all, like, like that, that possibility is terrifying, but not just that, it's like also like just two weeks was hard. It's kind of like reminds me of the first like couple weeks of the of the pandemic in 2020 when like a two week shutdown seemed impossible for all of us small business owners. Like that was untenable. And then it turned out to be a year and a half. Jenny, come here, buddy. I need, I need my buddy. Like the things that that were supposed to be temporary have become more permanent. And again, I have access to amazing doctors. I'm sure everything will eventually be fine, but it's just a matter of when. And like in between, this is where gratitude becomes really important because like it helps us to maintain perspective. Good night, I'm a mess. <clears throat> All right, Johnny, if you're gonna leave, I guess so will I momentarily. Hey, Lucy, look at you, you little lard. If you ever need a smile, you just come to the crabbiest little creature that's ever walked the earth and it'll, it'll inevitably be given to you. One of the things that this evening walk has done for me is helped me to put everything back into perspective. Like thinking about, man, like five years ago, I would have had no idea that I would be here in Nashville, Tennessee, a place that the sun shines like on 30 acres with 105 animals that need me which is so amazing where I would get to walk out of my office door and like have this cranky little jerk <laughs> meet me five years ago when I was saying goodbye to my first dog the first like love of my life Abby sent me Johnny and he's been here and he's my favorite part of my gratitude rocks don't tell the others he's always my favorite god what is wrong <laughs> I feel like we get like a once in a lifetime dog like once that I've had three. June, what the heck are you doing in there? Hold on. June is not a once in a lifetime dog. <laughs> Come on, Jenny, let's go get June. You little jerk, what are you doing? Looking for eggs? Come on. Though it's not usually because June comes in 
hanging out in the garden is a big part of my evening ritual. Being able to like kind of think through what I'm gonna make for dinner, what I'm gonna pick. June, please leave. Come on, go out. Good girl. It's another casualty of this that I won't be able to can and preserve everything that I planted and get my fall garden in the way that I normally would, but like all of that stuff is 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 manageable because we have neighbors who are farmers. I can trade and barter for literally everything that we need that we don't have. And worst case scenario, it's 2023. Grocery stores still exist. And whatever we can use is just a bonus. June, oh my gosh. Ah, come on, you little lards. The other thing, like, we really need this to get resolved before all the goats start having their babies because... Adam can milk the goats, but I do not want to make him have to. And Brenda's like already about to pop. I used to hate asking for help, like despise it because I didn't want to be an inconvenience to anyone. And I didn't want to actually need anyone because for so much of my life, when I did need someone, there wasn't anyone to be able to ask. But now there is. I have an incredible community and Adam has learned so much the last year and a half that we've been working together that he has been able to show up and to help when I've, when I've really, really needed it. But there is a point that I'm like, I don't want to have to keep asking. Certain things like daily chores, like no problem. You can dump a few buckets, you can fill a few buckets, but like, do I need Adam to be milking all four of my goats? <laughs> like, no. Lucy! I'm picking okra, buddy. You wanna have some okra? It really pleases me that Lucy loves okra as much as I do. Like, as much of a pain in my butt as she is. Like, we are basically the same person. Watermelon and okra is our life. And for whatever reason, Kevin Bacon and the rest of the pigs do not like okra, but good old Lucy, she always comes through for the important stuff. She really enjoys the fruits, well, vegetables of my labor. Anyway, I tend to really love having a good project. <laughs> I mean, look around, you'll see projects literally everywhere, which is part of like the grief that I'm feeling right now about it's fall. This is normally my most productive time of the year. Like since we moved to Nashville, it's the time when the temperatures start to get cooler. We have one more signature to be able to start work on the school again. This just feels like another dumb obstacle that like, yeah, we're gonna move past it. We're gonna figure it out. We always do. I'm not a quitter. I don't give up. Like we just find the way forward. But though I grew up in the most positive environment ever, it has been a thing that I've had to learn as an adult about how to grieve things when things aren't perfect. Because like, yes, we can, we can maintain a positive attitude. We can be super grateful. That helps us to stay focused on what's actually important and what like possibilities are ahead of us. But also like, it's okay to be sad when crap doesn't work out and doesn't happen the way that you want it to happen. And like, this is, this is not what I wanted. Like, I know better. I, I'm annoyed at myself. Do you mind, ma'am? Next steps are tomorrow. I have an appointment with an orthopedic surgeon. I'm terrified about the thought of this being a six month to one and a half year long process. I'm ter terrified about like the potential pain that comes along with physical therapy. Also living in the public eye when things aren't perfect even though I really care about making sure that I'm not projecting an image of perfection since literally everyone else is on social media and I want thing social media to be a more helpful, more friendly, more inviting, more real space. Like the last few weeks as I've been making Instagram stories or like, you know, in my last video that I posted, like lots of people were happy to chime in about what I should be doing or what I shouldn't be doing or like asking why I'm in a sling. Like the, the reason that I have my arm wrapped is because like I'm trying to keep everything contained because my doctor literally told me that if I moved my fingers, I would jeopardize like the healing process because I have a bunch of internal stitches that are holding like the the muscles and ligaments inside my hand together also like I keep it in a sling because 
I'm not used to not being able to just reach out and grab something. And like the, like the day after having the stitches in, like I like tripped and I went to fall and I grabbed something and I've literally never felt such bad pain in my entire life. So I'm wearing this literally to like help keep it contained, to help keep it elevated so that like the swelling doesn't continue to get be so bad that like I can't tell if it's like so swollen and that's why I can't feel it or if it's like something worse, which is literally our current situation. Like, we're all just doing the best that we can, you know? If I have one thing that I can do through this channel or like like through any of this is, is, to, is to help another person believe that like doing more with this one beautiful life that we get to live is possible. And, and if I do that, like literally all of this will be worth it. Like I will endure like, like the internet experts and the um, all the advice about how me as a female woodworker I'm using all my tools wrong and how like I don't know what I'm doing with my my animals or, or or whatever else like like if I get to help one other person get a little bit more out of the like out of their lives like it makes it all worth it this property I hope to turn into a place that makes people think that that more is possible, that a different way of thinking is possible, that there's hope even in really desperate and discouraging times, there's hope amidst discouraging situations, that there is like no matter what obstacle we face, another way to think about that obstacle. And like this is literally just an obstacle. Like it sucks and it's painful and, it, and, it, and it's not what I wanted for this season but it's a season and this season will end and I will be a better, different person as a result. And that is what I've been doing for the last 12 years. And I've cataloged my entire journey from total city slicker who knew how to do nothing for myself, who felt helpless in the face of all kinds of obstacles that I was constantly facing on my Squarespace website, anavaltrades.com. Squarespace has supported me every single step of the way. They built a platform for someone like me who is not super tech savvy to be able to easily drag and drop whatever I want to share with the world into a beautiful artist design template and then shares it with the world. If you are someone who thinks like me, you can find articles that talk about how I've learned to turn the chaos that I face every single day into a system that actually supports the person that I am completely outside the norms of what society tells us is okay and what is acceptable and what is normal because buddy we're not normal and if you are like me and you are wanting to share something with the world and just have an opportunity to exercise a different muscle check out Squarespace when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash animal trades and you'll get a 10% discount as grateful as I can be it's not like this isn't a struggle. So if you want to see what it's like to milk a cow one-handed or to try to wrangle a 1200 pound beast that is full of hormones and does not want to do what you want it to do, check out this video. I will see you there. Make sure to especially notice the part where she kicks over the milking pail and I try to get her foot off of the inside of the pail with one hand. Cheers.